welcome to students. So, today we start our lecture on talking about some elementary concepts of dynamical systems. We had looked into what we call as discrete dynamical systems. Our discrete dynamical systems are basically a space x and a self map f on x. And what do we study in this discrete dynamical system is basically for a typical point x, we studied what is f of x, what is f of f x, what is f of f of f x and so on. This basically comprises what is the orbit of x and what we study is we study the asymptotic properties of orbits for every x in x. Now, what happens if f is a homeomorphism? So, if f is a homeomorphism, we have two ways of looking into the orbits. So, we look into the forward orbit of x, which is again your, it goes as x f x f square x f cube x and so on. And there is also a possibility of looking into the backward orbit of x. So, the backward orbit is basically your x f inverse x We start with this basic concepts and we try to look into what sort of dynamics do we want to study for this system. So, if you look into this fact, right, we are since we are looking into orbits, the most elementary orbit that comes up is when f of x remains stationary to at x. So, x is a stationary point and this is what we called as a fixed point. So, x is a fixed point in this case. The second elementary observation that one can make is what happens when f n of x that means after nth step the point return the orbit returns back to x. So, in this case we say that x is a periodic point And for the least n, where this is true, we call n the period of so, x is a periodic point and it has a period n if n is the first instant where f n x is equal to x. Now, another elementary observation here is those points right where your exactly f n x is not equal to x, but what I find is that I have a case such that if I take f k of x right and then if I apply f n to it. That means, what I get here is f m plus k of x right that returns back to this turns out to be f k x. So, this is not something which is periodic, but what happens is some iterate of it behaves like a periodic point. So, what we call such points as x is an eventually periodic point. Now, in all the three cases what we observe is that the orbit of x here is finite and the orbit of x is finite only in these three cases. 
So, when orbit of x is infinite, it becomes a totally different case, right, which again we shall study what happens in particular for those cases. So, how do we study these orbits or how do we make this elementary observations? So, we find that let us look into some kind of elementary spaces and the best way to look into the dynamics or observe elementary things about dynamics is to study the face portraits. So, let us now look into what are face portraits. So, we look into the face portraits say for the system we have the real line and we have f and let us first look into the face portrait for f x equal to say minus x. For face portrait we simply look into the real line. Now, what happens over here? So, here we observe that if we consider the point 0, right, the point 0 remains at 0. What happens to minus 1 and what happens to 1? So, we observe here that under minus x, right, the point 1 is mapped into minus 1 and the point minus 1 is mapped into 1. What happens if we are going beyond 1 and minus 1? Again, we can think of 2 right, and minus 2. So, what happens here is that the point 2 is mapped to minus 2. So, the point 2 is mapped to minus 2 and the point minus 2 is mapped to this is also true for any elementary x that I take up over here. If I think of x over here, this point x gets mapped to minus x. So, again we have the system. So, the face portrait here is very, very simple right? and we can diagonalize everything. What happens to all the points? The scenario, the dynamics of this system is very, very clear from this particular portrait. So, what we have is we have x, we have for this particular system we have 0 is a fixed point here and any other point happens to be a periodic point of period 2. So, the dynamics here is very, very simple for all points on the real line, right? 0 is a fixed point. So, it is a point of period 1 we can say and all rest of all the points are periodic points of period 2. Let us now look into the case of f x equal to x square. What happens in this particular case? So, if I look into this particular case, again my point 0 remains as it is. Again 1 would remain as it is and I look into minus 1, minus 1 is mapped to 1. So, we have minus 1 being mapped to 1. What happens to say minus 2 here? So, we find that minus 2 is mapped to say 4 here, right, and we find that minus 2 is being mapped to 4. Similarly, your point 2, right, is also mapped to 4. What happens to a typical point x which lies between minus 1 and 0. So, if I take this x lying between minus 1 and 0, this typical point x is mapped to x square. So, it is mapped to a point between 0 and 1, but with a lesser magnitude. So, this is mapped to some point x square over here and if you find what happens to x square, right? Then this point x square is mapped to a point which has a further less magnitude and ultimately that is being driven towards 0. So, if we look into the face portrait for this particular system, for this particular system the face portrait is very, very simple. All the points on the left of 0 are mapped to the points on the right of 0. All the points are mapped with a magnitude less than that self if your value of the real is less than 1, if the real is greater than 1, it is mapped to the greater magnitude. 
So, all the points on the right of 0, right, if they are greater than 1, they are drifting towards infinity because we know that we can see easily see that 4 here is mapped further towards 16, right. So, any point which lies to the right of 0, right, the right of 1 basically is going tending towards infinity, any point between 0 and 1 is tending towards 0. So, the face portrait for this particular system is very, very simple. Now, we can have a certain dif different kind of face portrait also. For example, if we consider the system f x equal to minus x cube, what happens at minus x cube? So, we find here that our system, our 0 remains as it is. What happens to the point minus 1? So, the minus 1 under x cube is mapped to minus 1, but then it is minus x cube. So, it gets mapped to 1. So, your minus 1 is mapped to 1. What happens to any point between 0 and 1? So, if I take think of typical x over here, since x itself will be mapped to x cube, right, since it, will, it is it is mag, it with a lesser magnitude, but then it is mapped to minus of that. So, it is mapped to a point with a lesser magnitude minus x cube. So, ultimately if we try to look into and what happens to a point which has value greater than minus 1. So, supposing I look into the point 2 over here or I look into the point minus 2 over here, then minus 2 is mapped to basically minus 8 and minus 8 gets mapped to 8. So, the face portrait here happens to be very, very simple. If I look into the points which are less than minus 1, so these are mapped to a point of a very higher magnitude on the right hand side of negative of that part, right, on the right hand side of 1. Now, any point which is greater than minus, which is greater than 1, right, is mapped again to a point which is of greater magnitude, right, and that goes towards the left of minus 1. Your point minus 1 is mapped to 1, your point 1 is mapped to minus 1, your point x is mapped to minus x cube and if I look into minus x cube, it is again mapped to some point which is of lesser magnitude, right, but it goes towards left of 0 and it spirals around 0, you can think of this part, it spirals around 0, right, to basically in the end converge towards 0. So, the face portrait for this particular system is very, very simple. So, you find that this part, right, to the left of 1, it basically is going towards with a higher magnitude, it is going to the, uh, to the right of 1, the higher magnitude is going to the left of minus 1, the left of minus 1 with a higher magnitude is going to the right of 1. What happens between minus, minus 1 and 1? So, between minus 1 and 1, we find that again it is spiraling around 0 and the magnitude decreases and it ultimately converges to 0. So, the face portrait is a very, very simple way of looking into the system. Now, we can have other systems also and let us look into one such example. So, let us look into the example f x equal to 1 minus x square. Now, it seems to be a little bit not so trivial case of looking into what happens to 1 minus x square, it is not very simple to compute. But then if I look into this particular map, I know that f of 0 here is 1 and f of 1 here happens to be equal to 0. And if I look into the unit interval, I find that f of 0 1 is same as 0 1. So, I can think of this particular map as a map from 0 1 to 0 1, right. So, f is basically a map from 0 1 to 0 1. Supposing I want to study the dynamics of this map only in the interval 0 1, we need to look into what sort of orbits can we expect from the points over here. And ultimately, since it is very difficult to see, okay, fine, I have a periodic 2, I have a periodic point of period 2. So, I have a period 2 orbit over here where 0 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 0. But then, 
what comes to my rescue is we know some results from analysis. So, we know this Bravo's fixed point theorem. And this theorem says that if f from i to i is continuous, then f has a fixed point in i, where my i has to be a closed interval. So, for a closed interval, Bravo's fixed point theorem guarantees that there has to be a fixed point. And so, if you look into f x equal to 1 minus x square, it should have a fixed point in the interval 0 1. So, what is this fixed point? Of course, we can look into this fixed point by solving the equation f x equal to x or basically this equations would turn out to be x square plus x minus 1 is 0 which gives me x equal to minus 1 plus root 5 by 2. So, I do have such one fixed point here, but we ideally what can I say about the dynamics of this particular system. So, it is also easy to look into this system by again taking the graph of this particular function and since I am interested only in 0 1. So, I am interested only in 0 1, I find that the graph of the system looks to something to be like this part. So, this is your 1 minus x square and then I can draw the line y equal to x. We know that these two lines will only meet where x is same as 1 minus x square and so we get a particular fixed point here. So, instead of computing, we could easily find out that yes, we do have one particular fixed point in this particular interval. Then it has one fixed point, it has a periodic point of period 2, for example, 0 and 1, they both turn out to be periodic point of period 2. So, 0 and 1 is a periodic point of period 2, does it have any other periods? So, it is very easy to guess what happens over here. So, how do we find out whether it does have periodic points of any other period or not. So, the easy way is to look into a graphical analysis of this particular map and if we try to look into graphical analysis, it is very simple. We have this point as a fixed point. I look into what happens to 0, 0 is mapped to 1, again this goes to 1, 1, right, which is again mapped to 1, which is again mapped to if I go back to the line y equal to x is again mapped to 0 and then 0 takes the value 1. So, if we take a if we draw the line back to the graph it is mapped to 1. Does it have any other periodic point? What is basically the nature of the other periodic points? What happens to the other other points over here? Do the points remain where they are? Do the points converge to some particular point? Maybe Right now, I am not looking into this, we will look into this part once again, but this gives us another way of looking into dynamics and that is we can look into what is called graphical analysis. So, try to look into how we can look into the graphical analysis of some points. What do we exactly mean by graphical analysis? So, we try to see maybe for f x equal to Say let us look into x cube now and we want to look into this right with our domain being minus 1 and 1. What happens over here? So, if we try to look into this particular graph over here, So, the graph goes something like this. Now, what we find here is that f of x equal to x cube, I have three fixed points here, 
I have a fixed point, you just draw the line y equal to x, right? extend the line y equal to x and we find that this is 3 fixed points, it has 1 fixed point here at 1, it has another fixed point here at 0 and it has a third fixed point here at minus 1. So, we find that this has 3 fixed points here at 0, at 1 and at minus 1. What happens to a typical point between 0 and 1? So, we start with a typical point between 0 and 1. So, if I start with my x here, I am starting with my x here, right? This goes to the point which is called x comma x. So, yeah, it goes to x x cube and then it goes to the graph, this goes to x sorry, this goes to x x cube, right? And then it goes to x cube x cube then it again comes back to this phase which is basically my x cube x to the power 9 and it comes back further. Typical point between minus 1 and 0, right? If you look into any x here, it comes back here to this particular point. So, I start with this point, this was my point x and this is my point y. So, I start with my point y here. So, this particular point goes to y y cube then it again goes to the point y cube y cube, then it goes to the point y cube y 9, right? And we ultimately find that it converges towards 0. So, the graphical analysis of this particular dynamical system is very simple. What happens here is that 0 remains 0, 1 and minus 1 remains fixed. But all the points, all the rest of the points, right, their orbits are converging towards 0. What happens to points beyond that, right? Very easy to guess that the points to the left of minus 1 will be tending to minus infinity, the points to the right of 1 will be tending to infinity. Let us now look into another particular graph, say y equal fx equal to. 2x minus x square. We look into fx equal to 2x minus x square and now we try to see what happens over here between 0 and 1. So, I am not interested in further, I am looking into what happens between 0 and 1 and we find that if I draw this line, right, at 0 it takes the value 0 and at 1 it takes the value 1. So, this is something which looks like this between 0 and 1. So, I have 0, I have 1, right. It takes this value between 0 and 1. So, I have two fixed points here. I have a fixed point at 0 and I have fixed point at 1. Now, what happens to this particular graph as between 0 and 1? What are the orbits of all the points here between 0 and 1? So, we typically look into what happens to the points over here. Then we find that any point over here goes towards this graph, right? Then it converges to converges to one. By graphical analysis, we find that any point over here, right? You start with any point over here, right? It goes further, right? and it converges to 1. So, by graphical analysis, it is very simple to say that this will not have any other periodic points, right? It has only one point periodic point that is it has two fixed points 0 and 1 and rest of all the points they move towards 1. So, let us try to see what happens in cases where we cannot draw graphs. So, we can think of them to be simple examples. So, let us consider the example of a circle. So, we all know what is a unit circle. So, I am looking into the unit circle S1, right? And I want to take a particular map T defined by a constant alpha. I am looking into this particular system, and this system is very simple. When I took look into my S1, right? My S1 happens to be a circle. 
the unit circle. I can think of this right? and any point on the circle can be specified by theta. So, it can be parameterized by theta. So, my function happens to be very simple my t alpha of theta right I can say that this is nothing but theta plus alpha. So, I start with a point over here I know that this point is my theta right and what it does is, is it is nothing but it jumps to another point which is my theta plus alpha. Where does this point theta plus alpha do? So, this theta plus alpha also does nothing but it jumps again theta plus alpha. So, we get here something called theta plus 2 alpha right. Then it goes to something over here which is nothing but theta plus 3 alpha and so on. So, my system is very simple over here that the orbit of point theta right if I look into what is my orbit of point theta. So, the orbit of point theta happens to be nothing but theta, theta plus alpha, theta plus 2 alpha, theta plus 3 alpha and so on. So, this is basically my orbit of theta. Now, I want to look into the dynamics over here. So, in trying to analyze the dynamics over here, it is very important to know what is alpha because we know in the circle, the circle itself has a period of uh, it is periodic period 2 pi right. So, since the circle itself is periodic with period 2 pi, it is very important to know what your what is the constraint on alpha. So, let us try to see we will come back to this again let us let us try to see what happens when alpha is a rational multiple of 2 pi. So, supposing my alpha happens to be equal to say 2 pi times m by n what happens in that particular case. So, if we try with our point theta right what we find is that say t alpha right to the power n will be nothing but theta plus n times 2 pi m by n right. So, what is it? It is just a translation of theta by a multiple of 2 pi. So, what I get back is just theta. So, here for given any theta, so for given any theta over here what we find here is that t alpha to the power n of theta goes back to theta. So, the interesting case here is that all points are periodic. with period theta, the period n sorry with period n all points are periodic with period n. Now, we we'll look into this fact that so this is basically also something which we call as the rational rotation. So, this is like we are rotating along the circle and this is a rational rotation. So, this is also a rational rotation of the circle and we find that for a rational rotation what we find is that this all points here are periodic with the same period. Now, what happens when alpha is an irrational multiple of 2 pi because we can have either an rational multiple or an irrational multiple. So, what happens if alpha is an irrational multiple of 2 pi? So, I am taking 2 pi times r right where r is irrational. So, this is basically typically I should say this is an example of an irrational rotation we have 2 pi r. So, I know that typically if I look into my t alpha to the power n of theta right it is just going to be my theta plus n alpha. And if at any instant if I find that there are two iterates which are going to be equal supposing t alpha k 1 of theta should be same as t alpha k 2 of theta right then that would imply that k 1 is equal to 
k2 because theta plus alpha k1 uh, theta plus k1 times alpha will be same as theta plus k2 times alpha right which would imply k1 equal to k2 in the sense because my k1 minus k2 should be some kind of a integer right and uh, integer multiple of 2 pi right since my alpha is irrational that would imply k1 equal to k2. So, if I now look into my typical orbit of theta I find that this theta this t alpha theta this t alpha square theta right these are all distinct. Now, these are all distinct think of that let us come back to our circle again what is our circle here. So, we find that we have the unit circle it is a closed and bounded subset of r square right it is a compact space right and we very well know that for a compact space if I have an infinite set that infinite set will always have a limit point. So, this particular infinite set which is the orbit of theta right always has a limit point and hence I will have some two values right I have since this has a limit point right. So, there will be some point where it converges where the orbit where, where a subsequence of this converges. So, I will always have some kind of m and n such that if I look into mod of t alpha m of theta minus t alpha n of theta right this modulus will be less than some epsilon. Now, I can assume my k to be equal to m minus n assuming that my m has will be the bigger iterate than n then what does this imply that my t alpha k theta minus theta is less than epsilon. Now, I am using the fact here that our uh, function right basically preserves the length here it is an isometry it preserves the length here because every time it is just moving it is just cutting an angle it is just cutting uh, arc length of alpha. So, every time you have the same arc length there so this is basically typically an isometry and I am looking into the isometric property I can say that if this happens if I assume that this then that means that t alpha k of theta will be within epsilon range of theta. Now, what does that give us? So, let, let us typically look back to our example what does that give us. So, in that case what we get here is that I have perhaps I am looking into t k theta here. So, I have theta and t k theta over here. So, what happens next here is that I have theta this theta plus alpha and t k theta plus alpha somewhere over here. So, t t k plus 1 theta over here and what I find is that every time I have this cutting itself right in range of theta. Now, I also know that no point in the orbit can come back to itself. So, when I look into all these arc lengths right they will never be coming overlapping each they will never be basically superimposed on each other they could be overlapping and then since this keeps on moving all the fact what we have done is actually what what this does is that in small arc lengths of less than alpha we are basically covering the whole circle. So, the whole unit circle is covered in small units of is covered by small units of alpha and that tells me that basically typically everywhere you will find one point you will at least find one point in the orbit of theta which means that the orbit of theta happens to be dense the orbit of theta is dense in your S 1. So, orbit of theta is dense in S 1 right and you can easily see that for an irrational rotation the orbits are very simple simple I would say that we do not have any periodic point here because the look into the entire orbit of any theta right all the points in the orbit are distinct there is no periodic point there is no eventually periodic point, but it has 
a better property that if you look into all the orbits, right? So, for any theta, its orbit densely covers S1. So, the orbit of all the points here is dense. So, we find that for when you have an irrational rotation, the orbit here is dense. Now, we try to look again into the circle and this time I am looking into a different example. So, you have S1 and let me look into this map f over here, where I am defining my f as f of theta equal to 2 theta. What happens in this particular case? So, again let us try to look, try to draw the figure here. So, we try to draw the figure here, what we find here is your theta is being mapped to 2 theta, right. Then where is 2 theta being mapped to? So, 2 theta will be mapped to 4 theta, 4 theta will be mapped to say 8 theta, 8 theta is mapped to 16 theta and so on. So, we get again back 32 theta which would come back over here. So, now look into this fact. Now, this is a case of a homeomorphism here, right. So, I can also think of looking back into what is, so where is theta mapped to? So, it is mapped to here. So, if I look into f inverse, my f inverse of theta is basically theta by 2 and where does this map to? So, this maps to somewhere theta gets mapped to theta by 2 theta by 2 gets mapped to again theta by 4 and so on, right. Now, what happens for if I want to look into the dynamics of this particular system? So, the dynamics of this system is really very simple because I know that f of 0 is mapped to 0. Where is theta being mapped, right? I am always increasing the argument. Right. For any argument theta, the argument is increased by twice its range. What happens to the minus case? What happens to f inverse? f inverse, where is my minus theta being mapped to? So, if I look into my minus theta here, right, my minus theta is mapped to minus 2 theta, minus 2 theta is being mapped to minus 4 theta and so on. But here I have 0 which is being mapped to itself. So, what happens in this particular case? What happens in the case of 0? What happens to the rest of the points between 2 theta and theta? If I look into this arc between theta and 2 theta, it is mapped to a bigger arc right, which goes from 2 theta to 4 theta. This is again being mapped to a bigger arc between 4 theta and 8 theta. So, somewhere along you get a point n such that if I look into what happens to f n right of this arc, I am talking of this arc between theta and 2 theta right. So, this arc would have covered the whole circle right. So, f n of this would basically have covered the whole circle, it would be whole of S 1. We have a fixed point here 0. What happens typically when I am looking into the negative part, right, looking into the minus part over here, right. So, what is f inverse doing is that between theta and 2 theta, the arc, the arc length reduces to half, right, it is mapped to theta, theta by 2 then theta theta by 2 is mapped to theta by 2 theta by 4 and so on. So, the points here right the arc length here is decreasing in the negative case the arc length is decreasing, but ultimately what happens to a typical point theta over here? Theta is always mapped to 2 theta, 4 theta so on so forth whether it is close to 0 or it is far away from 0 it is always mapped in this particular region and since at some particular point you find that at that this particular arc length is converging is basically expanding to whole of S 1, right. Some point it will take the value theta. 
0, right. If it takes the value 0 everywhere, right, if for every typical theta it takes the value 0 at each and every point, we know that 0 remains fixed, then everything will remain fixed, right. But the expansion is so great, at some particular point in between it, they definitely will take the value 0, then it will remain stuck at 0 and the rest of the points will again travel back to expand will expand the rest of the points or maybe the rest of the arc length right will expand again to form the whole of S1. So, at since at each and every point we are doubling the length here right. So, this also can be said called a doubling map right. So, this doubling happens at each and every stage and it covers the whole of S1. Analyzing this points, analyzing the orbits of theta here become a little bit difficult here because what happens typically what happens when can we reach 0? We know for sure, very sure that if theta is a rational multiple of, is an irrational multiple of 2 pi, it will never reach 0, never remains stuck to itself, right. So, we know for very sure how are we moving over here, right. So, typically we can think of this fact that the points are moving randomly over here, right. The orbit of points here are quite random and we know that they will never come back or basically they are never sticking to one point, right. You are not finding a periodic point here, right. Theta moving to 2 theta is possible, we can have a theta which goes to 2 theta, it is possible, right. But we are not sure of what the orbits of this particular case are. Again, this is a particular case which we shall cover up once again when we look into some more theory. But right now, let us move to something else about the system. So, we want to now look into a typical case where again we will come back to this example to look for this particular case. So, let us look into some elementary definitions once again. Let P be a periodic point of period n. A point x is called forward asymptotic if I take f k n of x, right, it converges to p or I can say that limit as k tends to infinity f n of x is same as p. Then we say that a point x is forward asymptotic to p. Now, we look into the stable set of p. So, I call it as w s of p, right, which is basically the set of all points, right which are forward asymptotic to P. So, this is basically called the stable set of P. Now, let us come back to some examples that we have done earlier. Let us look into these cases again. We find here that this 0 is a fixed point. What are all the points? So, this is periodic point of period 1. What are all the points which are forward asymptotic to 0 or what is the stable set of 0? So, what here is what is the stable set? of 0 in this particular case. There is no point, right, because which converges to 0. What is the stable set of 0 here, right? The stable set of 0 happens to be equal to singleton 0, right. What happens to the stable set of any other? Now, any other point over here happens to be a periodic point of period 2, right. So, I can say that any other point here is p, right. And what is the stable set of p? It happens to be p itself, 
right. So, we find that this basically is p itself. Let us look into this particular case f x equal to x square. Again here my 0 happens to be a fixed point. What is the stable set of 0? What is the stable set of 0? We find that all points between minus 1 and 1, right? They are basically converging, their orbits are converging towards 0. 0 is a fixed point, their orbits are converging towards 0. So, the stable set of 0 happens to be minus 1, 1. Now, we have 1 also is a fixed point, right? What is the stable set of 1? The stable set of 1, I find 2 points here, right? 1 and minus 1. The rest of the points are do not come under the stable set of any other thing. Let us look into this particular case f x equal to minus x cube, right? What happens to the stable set of 0 again? The stable set of 0 again we know that everything else comes to 0, right? So, this is minus 1, 1. And again, what happens to the stable set of 1? Let me now look into the stable set of minus 1, right? Just same as minus 1 goes to maps to 1, right? And where is 1 mapped to? It is mapped to minus 1, right? So, what happens in this case? What is the stable set of minus 1? So, the stable set of minus 1 we find to be minus 1. Okay, I am looking into minus 1 as a periodic point. So, if the question is why should it be equal to minus 1, right? We are looking into minus 1 as a periodic point of period 2. So, for example, where does s, x to the power 6 converge to? I am now looking into f square of some point converging, right? So, what we find is that minus 1 is the only point which comes back to minus 1, the limit tends to minus 1. For no other point, the limit tends to minus 1. So, the stable set of minus 1 is minus 1. What is the stable set of 1 in this particular case? So, the stable set of 1 here will be just 1 because under f square, right, that is my f square turns out to be x to the power 6, right. No other point, no other point under f square is converging to 1, right. 1 is the only point which converges to 1. So, the stable set of 1 happens to be equal to 1, okay. So, I want to look into one more definition here. Since we talked about forward asymptotic, we can also talk about backward asymptotic. So, a point x is called backward asymptotic to P if f minus k n x tends to p or I can say that take limit as k tends to minus infinity f of minus k n sorry of f of k n x converges to is equal to p. So, this is basically called the backward orbit and this basically one can think of this when f happens to be a homeomorphism right and we think of this to be the unstable set of P. So, the unstable set of P is basically the set of all points backward asymptotic we can think of again let me go back to just one example over here. Let us look into f square equal to x square, right. What I know that 1 also happens to be a fixed point here. What is the backward, what is the uh, unstable set of 1 in this particular case? So, we find that under the negative iteration, right, all points 
from 1 to infinity right and all these points from, from 0 to infinity all these points are converging to 1 under backward thing right. I am now looking into backward part right. So, instead of x square it becomes root x right. You find that everything is converging here. What happens to this case? I cannot think of this case right now because I am looking into x square right. I cannot define the negative part, but let us look into what happens over here right. What we find here is that all points right 0 infinity everything is backward asymptotic to 1. Backward asymptotic points can also be said that these are repelling away from the fixed point right. So, basically you find find very close to them, but that that is moving away from fixed point ok. So, maybe we end up here right and we will come back to this again in the next class.